Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is called Electric Nightmare. Here we go. Okay, I think you get the idea. We have a little special macro here called Flanger Plus, so let's take a listen to that here. Okay, so let's get into this here. So let's look at our effects section. We're using every single slot, so let's turn this off for now. Let's go to our synth side, our utility engine, turn this one off, analog two, or engine two analog, turn that one off. So now we're just in engine number one, which is a wavetable, and it sounds like this. So the purpose of this engine really is to get that kind of high frequency content, the character of this sound here. That's kind of what we're aiming for. That's kind of the, the, the feeling of this whole patch here. Gives it the electric vibe to it. So with that being said, we're dropping this down by 24 semitones or two octaves. Over here in the unison, we have two voices, detuned 1.50% and the stereo is at 100. The only modulation we're really doing for this one is on the position. So we've manually set this position to 0.136, but we have modulated it with this envelope number two at an amount of 0.87. So what does that mean? So every time we hit a key, you can see that this blue line over here kind of jumps up and gives us that little taste of this uh, of this wavetable. Now this wavetable is called Poltergeist and that is found in the processed under the P section. So let's take a look at the second envelope here. So that's this guy over here. The attack is going to be one millisecond to decay 95 milliseconds, sustain zero, release 100 milliseconds for our curves. Attack is going to be zero. Decay curve is going to be negative two. Retriggered by the poly keyboard. Remember every time we hit a note, it's going to re-trigger this envelope, and then the mode is ADSR, so attack, decay, sustain, and release. Great, so now we're going to be using a little bit of this frequency modulation at 0 0.304, and the type is going to be linear. And this one is getting sent to filter number one, which is the MS-20, which we're going to get to in a little bit here. So let's take a look at engine number two. So this is the analog. And the purpose of this one really is to kind of fatten up the first one here, because as we listen to this first one, it's very thin. We have the character to it, but we don't really have any thickness to it. You know what I'm saying? So we need to thicken it up just a little bit. And that's where this engine two comes in handy. So let's go over to engine number two and let's take a look and see what's going on here. So for the main course tuning, there's no change over here. The, ha the uh, unison voices are two, detuned 1.50% and stereo is at 100%. We're using all three oscillators. The first one is down one octave. That is a downward saw and the volume is all the way up at zero. Our second oscillator is up seven semitones or adding the perfect fifth and that is gonna be another downward saw and the volume is also at zero dB, so all the way to the top. And our last oscillator for this one is going to be down two octaves or negative 24 semitones. And that is going to be a square wave and the volume not all the way, but negative 4.11. And we do have the drift set at its default at 0 0.010. Now this one is also going to filter number one, which is this first guy here, the MS-20. So that's pretty much all that's going on in this engine here. So let's take a look at the utility engine and see what's going on here. So for the first noise oscillator, we have this white noise parentheses wide. Let's turn this oscillator off here. Now this is really just to get a little bit extra sound and there's some more frequency content, some more thickness, if you will, in the higher uh, frequencies that is. And this one is also getting sent to filter number one and the volume here is gonna be down 12 dB. 
Moving on from there, we have our sub oscillator here. This is down one octave by default. It is a sine wave. And always remember, this one is going direct out. You can always click this. Yours might be defaulted to maybe the filters or an FX bus, but this one is getting sent direct out because we don't want this low end sine wave getting affected by all these, uh, these modules right over here. So we kind of want it to be direct out, let it do its own thing, right? So with that being said, let's turn all of these back on here. And let's take a look at the filter. So we're using the MS20 and this macro over here. So manually, we set this cutoff at 124 hertz. But don't reach for this one. Go for the cutoff down over here because it's a decent range that kind of fits better with this patch here. The resonance for this patch is going to be stuck here at uh, 0.504 you can always change this manually but there's no resonance macro over here because there's going to be distortion the flanger and then the effect so there's not going to be a resonance macro as there normally is in this patch so with that being said let's take a look at our effects section let's turn these on here and turn off our aux our fxb and let's take a look at number a or letter a i should say so the first thing that happens here is that it hits a eq or hits an eq a parametric eq so this is before So for here, we're really just getting that low mud out of here. We're pushing an interesting spot over here. So this is going to be at about 2.5K about, and we're pushing about 10.6 dB, so quite a lot here. Now, this is really going for the character of the sound. It's not necessarily like we're going to EQ, we're going to take out the low mids, we're going to push this, we're going to scoop that. This is more so a shaping EQ to kind of get a certain tonality out of this patch. So our low shelf over here is going to be 54.8 hertz. We're taking out negative 8.64 db and the q is 0.707 the first one over here which is kind of weird because you would think it was over here but i just moved this one around this one here is going to be 2.5k like i was saying and we're adding 10.6 db and the q is going to be 1.23 the second band over here is going to be 273 hertz and we're taking out 3.96 db and the q is 1.23 these other bands here we're not using, so we can skip over these right over here. Next up, it goes into a distortion. Which is actually quite a bit here, so this is going to be on the distortion module, the distortion type. The drive is going to be 44.5 dB, and then we have this auto on, which should come automatically on for you. But as you can see here, the volume is down, or the dry wet's down, but it is modulated quite a bit at one to one so 100 percent. so this distortion right over here this macro right now we're only getting 8.844 so like 84 percent of distortion so this is kind of where you want to affect the distortion sound which i kind of left it here by default around like the 0.8 because it's, it's a lot but it's not too too much you can always crank this all the way if you would like to from there we go to a multi-band Now, the thought process of this one is to really bring out the character of that electric type of sound. Notice the difference with and without it. Like those, the higher end really just jumps out at you quite a bit here. And like I always say, this is always to taste, right? Just kind of move some of these bars, compress what you like, maybe bring up what you like, and kind of maybe take down what you don't like. It's really, really up to you, and it's more so a carving tool for me, more of a dynamic EQ in that sense. Next, we, next up, we have FXB, so then it goes into a delay. So let's turn some of these off here. Now, our first delay is going to be an eighth note. Now, we have the fine at 0.149 milliseconds, feedback 0.352, stereo width 0.7, selected on ping pong, high pass frequency 20 hertz, low pass 7,966 hertz, or almost 8K. Then the dry wet's going to be modulated by the macro, this FX macro number four, and that's going to be at 0.20, so 20%. Next, it hits another delay, and this time is going to be one over four. Now, the fine is going to be minus 0 0.105 milliseconds, feedback 0.352, stereo width 0.7, ping pong as well, high pass frequency 20 hertz, low pass frequency 4,361 hertz, and then the modulation is also going to be 0 0.20 or 20%. Next up, we have the reverb. So 
So the pre-delay is 20 milliseconds. The size 1 decay 0 0.460, stereo width 0 0.5, high pass 200 hertz, low pass 15K, and the damping at 0 0.6. Now the dry wet's going to be down for the knob manually, but the effects knob over here, this macro, is going to bring it up at 0 0.20 or 0 0.28, 28%. Last up, we have this special macro, this auxiliary macro. So this one's interesting in the sense that when this is on and this flanger macro is all the way down, we're not going to be hearing any changes really because this auxiliary is getting controlled by this send knob. So if we're not sending anything to it, we're not we're getting anything back. So there's no effect, right? But as I move this flanger plus macro, we can see the send knob over here starts moving. So check this out. Very interesting effect here. So it first gets hit by a flanger. Now the dry weight for these one or for this flanger here is going to be 100%. The rate is going to be 0.669. Delay 1.56 milliseconds. Depth 0 0.280. Feedback 0.819. High pass is going to be 125 hertz. Low pass 9,935 hertz. Triangle and stereo are both selected, and negative is not selected. And that's going to sound like this for the uh, difference there. Next, we're going to hit it with a Chorus Juno 6 on the Mode 2 preset, and the dry wet's going to be at 50%, because all the way to 100 was a little bit too much. Last but not least, we hit it with a Shimmer Reverb, but this one's not going to be so beautiful, because we're dropping the pitch shift down by 5 semitones. So the feedback here is going to be 0.5, size 50%, modulation 1, high pass frequency 200 hertz, low pass 7k, ducking 0, stereo width 0.75, and the dry wet for this one is 48%, and this normal is going to be selected here. So that's basically this patch in a nutshell. We have our cutoff on our macro, the distortion module that we talked about, this flanger plus that we just went over, and then everything else that is effects related is going to be controlled from this fourth macro over here. So if you'd like to get a copy of this patch for free, look in the video description below. You can download it all day long, I guess, or all night long. I don't even know what time it is that you actually work on your stuff. But anyway, it's free. You can download it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.